What's going on YouTubers? Welcome to another video. Today I'm going to bring you another top 10 list and we're going to do the top 10 dioramas. Now, if you're new to the hobby and don't know what a diorama is, it's basically two or more characters on a single base or a connecting base uh, that go together. For example, this wolf predator has two characters on the base, wolf and an alien. So this is considered a diorama. You also have dioramas where it's multiple statues with similar style bases meant to be displayed together, uh, which I'll show you here momentarily. But I wanted to make the top 10 best dioramas. Uh, now this is only including statues within my collection. Uh, so there's plenty of other dioramas I currently don't own that I do think are amazing and would definitely make this list, but I don't currently own them. For example, the ECC Lycan and Marcus Maquette. Those are considered a diorama, probably one of the best ones out there but I don't own them, so they won't be on this list. We're just gonna do the ones I currently own. So let's get to it. Welcome everyone. So let's get to the top 10 dioramas now. So the first three are actually in the DBZ collection. So just showing you me here so you can gauge, you know, size of this, never really done it like this before. So the first three are actually all VKH dioramas. So, let me just show you guys. I currently only have one of these actually connected, but I'm gonna show you pictures so you can see them connected together. So the first number 10 on the list is gonna be the Androids diorama. And that includes Android 16, 17, and 18. So these three, these two right here actually connect to the front out here. And I will show you a picture so this is the three main androids from the Android Saga and Dragon Ball Z, of course. If you haven't seen the show, I absolutely recommend it. But these just form a very large diorama. You know, it's a Android 19, uh, 16 is about 20 inches tall. You're gonna need a lot of space if you actually do connect them. It does have a light up function and it incorporates uh, part of his attack in their bases having these like little resin sticks. And there's actually two versions uh, I have the one where it's glow in the dark and just see through light up. So this is an absolutely amazing diorama, the absolute best representation of the androids from that saga, and it's an amazing diorama. So that's number 10 on the list. Number nine is the cell, and I actually do have these connected currently, although it is missing a few parts. Most noticeably is that right there, and that base does connect to him to have basically the entire cell evolution. So you get, right here's the three main forms and those are just like the larva forms. But the way VKH did it is he incorporated all forms of cell from both egg to larva to cell form one, two, and three. So it just forms this absolutely awesome, massive diorama, one six scale. You can see it's on top of a detolf. Detolf's about 15 inches wide. So this takes about a detolf and a half. It's about 20 inches tall to the top of cell form two. So here's cell form one. Absolutely awesome, amazing detail. These are all taken directly from the anime. And then the final Kamehameha with the electricity effects. Super, super cool. Absolutely love this diorama. Best way to get cell in my opinion. And then the best DBZ diorama is definitely the VKH Frieza one. This incorporates all forms of Frieza. So it basically incorporates form one, two, three, and four. All four of these form a massive giant diorama that's unbelievably amazing. I wish I could display it in diorama form, but the only way to do that would be to put it on the ground to do that, just because they take up a lot of space. Uh, so I'll show you a picture. I have done videos in the past of all the VKH dioramas together. So you can check out that video. But that's my favorite Dragon Ball Z diorama. And it was actually his first one he's done. So I do believe VKH is doing an actual Android one. Uh, so I hope to see that someday. But the Frieza one here is absolutely amazing. Let me just do some quick close-ups on these. So he goes actually directly in the middle. Form one. And then form two... And then this giant one, these are all dioramas in their own except for form one. And of course, Spinal Frieza. And he actually incorporated as well where he could connect those two and those two as well into another diorama. 
So just so many awesome scenes done by VKH, and I just love how he does that. That's the one thing he does that pretty much no other studio does out there is make these massive dioramas that connect and just display so well together. And that's why they're my favorite studio. But for the dioramas, those are my three favorite from my Dragon Ball Z collection. And now we'll get onto some movie diorama statues, which is gonna be the remainder of the list. Alrighty, so we've already done 10, nine, and eight. So now we're gonna to get to number seven. Uh, and that's gonna be the Iron Studios 1 10th scale diorama, uh, the end game version. Uh, so this is all individual pieces. The only one that actually has two characters on it would be the Iron Spidey versus Outrider, which is currently not out yet. But these all form a massive diorama. They are meant to be displayed together to form a giant scene. So I am missing several characters, of course. Uh, they're still in pre-order status. They will be shipping to me in the near months. Uh, but I absolutely love this diorama. These are one-tenth scale, so they're very small. If this was in like one-sixth scale or larger, this would be the best diorama ever made. But due to size, I'm going to say that this is number seven on my list. So here it is. I still got many characters to get. Hopefully very, very soon. But I just love how you can display them all in one giant scene, recreating that epic end battle and end game. I should be getting Pepper Potts, Captain America, Scarlet Witch next. So really excited to have them. But, you know, when you do them all together like this, they form a giant scene. As you can see, this is inside a stuva. You know, this is like 48 inches wide, 19 inches deep. So it does take up quite a bit of space when you get them all. When it's just like one or two, they don't have any presence and I wouldn't recommend them. But when you get many, they look absolutely amazing. So this is number seven, Iron Studios 110th Endgame. Alrighty folks, now we're down to number six. And that's gonna be the Iron Studios 1-6 scale Hulkbuster vs. Hulk. This thing is absolutely monstrous for a 1-6 scale. Both Hulk and Hulkbuster are very big. Hulkbuster, though, is extremely big. You can see next to Bane, which is a very large one for scale, that the Hulkbuster is still much bigger. He measures 26 inches tall and has one of the best, like, battle-damaged paint jobs I've ever seen on a statue. It's absolutely mind-blowingly good. And these two are posed together perfectly with matching bases. I even made it into a whole diorama scene with the backdrop and background. These are very underrated. I think they're absolutely amazing together. This is inside a 29 inch wide packs and it still barely fits. It'd be better if it was a 39 inch packs and if it was up higher. But this Hulkbuster weighs about 80 to 100 pounds. So I wouldn't trust it on a mid shelf or even a top shelf. It'd have to be on top of the entire shelf. But it's an absolutely amazing diorama, massive and incredibly cool. So it definitely made my list as one of the best dioramas out there. So number six, Iron Studios Hulkbuster vs. Hulk. Number five is the Prime One Studios Ninja Turtles. For the most part, you don't see these displayed connecting bases because it just takes up so much space. Like these are an absolute space killer. And that's the one reason I wouldn't rank them higher. Granted, it's cool having something large, but when it takes up that much space, it's very difficult to display them. But I absolutely love these. On each individual level, they're all amazing, but they do form a massive diorama. All the bases actually do connect, and I'll show you here. This was originally shown at a San Diego Comic-Con. It just blew my mind on how amazing they looked. You know, each of these statues are like the size of a Hulk one-fourth. So they're very massive, incredibly detailed. You know, they have like what looks like glass eyes that you can actually, there's like a little knob where you can move it on how you want to display it. And I absolutely love the design and detail of these. I think it's some of Prime One's best work. You know, it's like, but as a diorama, they're absolutely amazing. It's just a huge space hog, so it's very hard to display them connected together. Otherwise, they're absolutely amazing. So number five, Prime One Ninja Turtles from the first movie. Alrighty, now we're down to number four, and this is another Prime One Studio statue. This is their King Kong, or just Kong, versus Skull Crawler. 
I absolutely love this statue. It has incredible presence. It's not too difficult to display. I mean, it is very tall, but it does fit on a stupa quite easily, as you can see. But just an absolutely beautiful diorama. The inclusion of real hair on Kong, multiple portraits and switch out options. I love the base, the splashing water, how the base is incorporated into that chain that Kong's holding. That's part of the deluxe version. And the skull crawler is absolutely amazing. Now, I believe it's made of vinyl and that's what gives this an incredible detail and paint job. Plus it prevents breakage. You can just see how close that claw is to scratching out Kung's eye. But this is an absolutely amazing diorama, no doubt. I freaking love it. I can't say enough good things about this. And so it definitely made my list. Number four, Kong vs. Skullcrawler. And now we're back to where we began. Number three is the Wolf Predator Legendary Scale. Now, granted, this is one of my favorite statues, but as a diorama, I don't think it's the best out there, but I do think it's one of the best. Uh, purely because of how epic it is, especially when you consider the scene when this actually happened. He just leaped over and cut this alien basically in half with the whip. And so that's why I do like it better with the whip. Plus the whip just looks super cool. But the alien has been cut in half. It's draining onto the base and you can see how it's acid. It's destroying that ground. I included this one third mask. I love the look of the alien as it's struggling. A wolf just leafing off it, about to attack another alien or their pred, pred alien. But it's just an epic diorama. You know, I wouldn't call this a single statue. I consider this a diorama because it does include two characters. Even if it's just a half alien, it is a diorama, no doubt. And that's the one reason I believe this is the best predator statue ever made. And I believe it will always remain that way. So you just can't get cooler than this. Plus, Wolf has probably the best design of any predator out there. But yeah, this is, for me, the third best diorama in my collection. And number two, we're back to Iron Studios. This is the 1-6 scale Avengers diorama. Now, I am incorporating a few additional pieces. The actual Black Widow and Hawkeye are part of the Avengers 2 line. Loki and the Chitauri Commander in the back are actually Hot Toys. I have incorporated a backdrop and background and some additional elements on the base and on the characters. But for me, Avengers was one of the breakthrough movies that just blew my mind, became my favorite movie of all time when I first saw it, saw it multiple times in theater. I still think it's one of the best movies ever made. The mix of comedy, the characters disbanding, getting back together, the epic scene when Hulk came and just, you know, I'm always angry and the music. It was just definitely a game changer when it came to movies. And I just fell in love with it. And when I first saw this diorama, I absolutely loved it. I did wish they included Black Widow and Hawkeye. So that's why I bought the Avengers Age of Ultron version. So I can complete the entire cast of the original movie. But I think this is one of my favorite displays in my entire collection. Even though it's only 1.6, I just love the way it looks. I think it's just absolutely amazing. And for me, it's the second best diorama in my collection. Iron Studios... 1-6 Avengers. And now we come to number one. And for me, this is the best diorama ever created. The Iron Studios Civil War 1-4 scale diorama. Now, they did not include every single character, although if they did, it would have cost like $15,000. But this set in general cost, I think about five grand. And you got six characters meant to face off against each other. Technically, if you include Ant-Man, you have seven characters. And I also put Spider-Man because he was, you know, on Iron Man's team. So you can, you know, but he's not technically included in this. We're just including everything right here. So Captain's team. And these all have connecting bases. And each of them on their own are absolutely amazing statues. I absolutely love them. Ant-Man, you can display anywhere you want, whether it's on Captain's sh shoulders right there or just on the base. There's Bucky. Yeah, these ran about six to $800 each. I absolutely love the paint job on War Machine and Iron Man. So epic. They come with a few switch outs on most of them. You know, War Machine, Falcon, Captain, and Iron Man all have switch outs. Bucky and Black Panther don't. 
But these look like they just jump straight out of the freaking movie. They're massive, incredible presence, incredible detail. I absolutely love this diorama. I was so excited when I finally completed this. And it's definitely, for me, my favorite diorama I've, I currently own and have seen. I can't fully connect Captain's base to Hawkeye because of how big those wings are. That wingspan is enormous. And normally he would go back further, but it'll hit that wall. So there's not enough space to display it combined, but Iron Man is combined. I'd love to be able to display this like on a table and have them actually facing each other. You need a lot of space for that. But I think combined, this entire set is the best diorama out there. Just absolutely amazing. And uh, yeah, so that's my top 10. Let me know your thoughts and comments below. You know, I think uh, one of the best diorama's out there definitely is the ECC Marcus versus Lycan, even though that's technically not exactly how it happened. You never see Marcus in that form fighting a Lycan. But that's definitely one of the best out there. There's some other amazing dioramas as well. But for me, I'm a huge fan of dioramas. I believe they make some of the best statues out there. I love recreating scenes, multiple characters, connecting bases. You know, a lot of my Dragon Ball Z statues are dioramas. So, you know, I probably own about 60 dioramas in total uh, within my entire collection. You know, when you incorporate all my Dragon Ball Z stuff. You know, not a ton of studios do these dioramas, but I'm a huge fan of them. And I think they're some of my favorite statues. I'll see you guys next time. Like, comment, subscribe. Have a great day.